Hello and welcome everyone. In this video, I'm going to talk about Figma. Figma is a free tool which is available on the internet which you can use to design your wireframes. And this tool is pretty helpful when it comes to designing your full stack applications. The first video over here is going to, I'm going to give you a basic introduction to Figma and we're going to look at different tools and different operations which are available in Figma and then we're going to do the rest of it. I'm here on a Safari browser. Uh, you can use Chrome or for Firefox as well. I just uh, and you go have to go to figma.com. Uh, this is the main website link. The good thing is Figma is a cloud-based platform, which means you don't really need to install anything. You just need to sign in using your Gmail ID or account, and you're all good to go. You can just simply click on login. You can use your Gmail ID and select the account that you want to go with, and you are all good to go. So it's taking a little while. Um, I have a lot of things going on so what I'll do is I'll click on new design and I'll have my Figma layout over here okay so, it's this okay perfect so another important thing that you would understand is that Figma is similar to Google Docs or you know Google Sheets which means you can have multiple people working on one single project at the same time so you have a share option over here as well where that will allow you to share your ideas and collaborate with people to do things at the same time okay so you can have multiple people working on one single project. You can have multiple people working on one single layout at the same time. It can be a website. It can be a one single, you know, entity that you want to work on, or it can be a simple project if, if it's a mobile application or anything like that. Let's see the things one by one and let's see what do we have uh, part element by element. The first option uh, that the first thing that we were looking at was the menu bar. Okay. So the menu bar over here is present like this. You have different options over here, which talks about file. So, you know, in case you want to add a new file, you have, a, you know, you want to do a Figma Jam. Figma Jam is essentially like doodle board where you can draw your ideas, talk to people and, you know, have that, you know, two way conversation where you can all, all the people can sketch on one single board. Then you have a sketch file uh, in case you want to create a sketch file, which is like for reference layouts, uh, image placements, save a local copy in case you want to keep a local copy for your references or just as a backup. Uh, and export options, which allows you to export the file in different formats, which are compatible with Adobe XD or other systems that you want to work with. Then you go to the edit option where you can see all these another, you know, all these tools, which has copy, paste and you know, color picker. Uh, essentially, all of the rest of the elements will come into action when you are using a specific font or specific um, application. So, you know, that's like very important. Then you go to view, you view will uh, give you like the layout grids, which essentially are the, uh, the, uh, the grids which are going to be there. We haven't really added any boards, so they are not visible right now. View will also give you the option to show rulers, uh, the rulers which are there uh, present right now. So, you know, rulers are going to help you in case you want to add a bridge or add a reference marker like this, you know, uh, let's suppose I want to make a rectangle. I can have a ruler so that, you know, you're making sure that you are uh, making a straight line. Let's just get rid of that for now. Uh, rulers, let's hide them. Okay, perfect. And then you have vectors. Uh, then you have go to object. Uh, when you have multiple objects, which are basically strokes, uh, strokes are essentially lines which are there. You can go with the strokes uh, and object tool is going to help you attach, detach, you know, mask all these uh, blocks and pieces together. Vector is essentially used for joining, combining, healing, or, you know, or making things into a vector format. And that's pretty important. Text, just a simple text box, uh, you know, increase, bold, uh, highlight, italic, all those simple tools which are there. Arrange is essentially for arranging the alignment, okay, because since we are working with layers, what happens is if a layer is on the top, that is going to be visible, and if a layer is at the bottom, that's not going to be visible. So it's very important that you should know that a layer as alignment is something which is going to show or, you know, do a prominent amount of work when it comes to placing objects all together, okay. Plugins are essentially for, you know, adding and managing plugins. You can have a lot of plugins in Figma, which essentially talks about how your simple components connect together and how your simple components are going to, you know, bind up together and make a single structure layout. Okay. So, you know, you can have a lot of plugins, which are going to helpful, be helpful for exporting, for, you know, combining multiple objects and even doing, uh, you know, more iterations on the entire thing. Okay. Uh, integration, you have integration with Dribble. Uh, Dribble is an online website where you can export a design and you know show them, display them directly. So you have integration with preferences. Okay, preferences for you know, geometry, all the formatting which is required. Not really used that much, but uh, that's it. So libraries are essentially for adding more options, tools and toolboxes. 
get desktop app there's a desktop app but i don't really recommend to using it um it's better to go on a website and you know use that that's a better option a uh, help and account you know in case you want to log out or do anything like that that's there for that uh then you have tools mm. before that let's talk about options okay so options is this drop down box okay options talk about you know the project that you're working with so you know so uh, this is like a demo app so you, know, you just want to write demo over here i want to name it like demo and uh, i can duplicate it rename it uh, if i duplicate it you know i it will make a a copy of this thing and you know then i have multiple versions of the same thing okay so that that's that's pretty important but then you can delete options export it okay so if you go to show version history so the version history is something which is very very important i like the idea of having a version history why because it allows you to have multiple iterations of the same design and you can keep the same design for all sorts of layout you know very helpful so you know version history comes over here you can have more and more compact layouts and more and more layouts running at the same time the the essential idea is that with the more or number of layouts that you add it's going to be helpful for you to you know do more iteration and you know it can be a little bit problematic that's why they have added version history so current version is this one you can have more versions uh, and the author name will be also there which means the person who is making a change uh, his name will will be visible over there so that's that's pretty amazing um and you can have multiple pages and adds all sorts of layout let's just uh, make another page hmm okay perfect so you can see uh, the, uh, the the where the project is the the directory and everything so you know be helpful let's move ahead okay uh let's talk about canvas okay so canvas is basically the area where you're going to do all sorts of operation where you're going to add elements where you're going to draw and draft all the blocks and pieces you can change the background of the canvas like this you know in case you want to have a custom color for the canvas uh this is pretty amazing and pretty good why uh because uh sometimes you want to see how it's going to look on a black screen okay because essentially uh, your phones are designed for black screen so you know in case you want to see how it's going to look on a black screen you can do it like this or you know in case you are designing something for uh, like a poster or a big screen event so all of these iteration can be you know examined and you know, looked upon over here so pretty pretty helpful um you can just set it to default by this and that's how you get the default color okay perfect so you know inspector okay inspector is essentially for this area okay so inspector is basically uh, an exported tool where you can have all the properties of this uh, area you know in case you want to uh, select or uh, if you select something you want to see the properties which are visible which are not visible you would have all the idea over here uh, again very uh, very helpful okay let's move ahead of creating a frame how do you create a frame how do you get started that's the first thing that you should know okay so essentially what happens is figma allows for frames to be added okay so you know if you click over here you can create a frame okay and it's going to ask you which sort of frame are you working upon now if you if i just start drawing like this it's going to draw a custom frame okay that's something that is not really required every time but you know in case you have exact number of pixels in mind then you can do that but what i like to do is i like to you know make things for you know uh, application based purposes you know like in case you want to make it for iphone 13 pro max you have it over here okay uh, because the size screen size actually matters a lot so you know if you go to frame and uh, if you are 13 mini it's going to look something like this now you might be thinking both of these look almost sim almost similar you know when you when you are designing something but the problem is the aspect ratio sometimes changes okay uh, i'll give you an idea of this thing if you go to frame okay and uh, if you if you look for devices which are there so i have 11 pro max okay now uh, th right now i have the phone as well so you know i have uh, the 11 pro max over here and i also have the 13 mini over here so the the thing is like the display ratio changed okay they over time what they did is like they changed the display ratio which eventually landed in a situation that you have to make sure that the pixel size are uh, you know uh, different okay so when you are optimizing an application for a specific phone especially for iPhones you know it's a really good helpful tool uh, when you are deploying or developing application so pretty amazing job on you know having all these phones and layouts uh, inside the Figma tool as, as well okay so that covers that and then let's talk about zooming okay because zooming is uh, you know going to be very important now you can zoom uh, in 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 the in the work area using a trackpad uh, what i usually recommend uh, have having is like a trackpad like this which allows you to zoom in the area like this and you know uh, so that you can navigate around or otherwise you have the zooming options over here as well okay um in case you want to you know zoom 50% you can do that up uh, and scrolling around and scrolling around is like much more easy with the trackpad because trackpad allows you for pinch zoom pinch zoom okay and pinch zoom is something which is 
or sometimes important you know so that you know you have the comfort of spanning around and you know looking upon your design and everything so you know that that comfort is something which uh trackpad gives but in case you don't really want to invest in a trackpad even a mouse is more than good um i essentially also like work with the mouse so in case you want to work like this or you know work work like this i have a side scroll wheel which allows for uh side scrolling as well so you know anything would work uh i mean upon you you know how do you want to you know use these tools and how you want to make the maximum out of it so that's there let's move ahead okay let's move ahead into practical zooming in okay that's that's another thing which is there so you know just tools and tips and tricks i practice using hand tools and move around okay yeah so you know sometimes you have hand tools as well um if you if you press space bar okay you you would get uh, let me just turn off all the options let me go back okay so we we have all the layers over here so you know you can see all the layers all the assets which are there you you are on page 1 okay so uh if you select this and you know press space bar okay i think uh, not not really working right now but essentially space bars are actually for you know having uh you know tools options and everything so you know when you press the space bar you would have the icon pop up okay so you if you go back into the previous one um you you would see that the zooming option like this okay so uh, if you go on the jam board like uh, if i go over here and i go to file and you know jam file let's open a figma jam as well let it open yep okay so perfect so when you press the space bar you can actually switch between tools in in panning okay so in case you want to pan around or in case you want to draw something uh you can have all these options which allow you to you know draw essentially and collaborate with people uh when you're jamming all together okay so and you have libraries for stickers in case you know you want to put <laughs> text over here so essentially it's it's a good tool to you know play around with as well okay let's move ahead and let's see okay now create a text layer okay let's let's understand you know and create a simple text layer which is going to be helpful um i'll just click over here and i'll start writing something demo app okay now the thing is like when you are having uh, an application like this uh, like figma okay essentially what 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 is helpful is that you can move around things pretty easily okay you can move around things and you know make prototypes pretty easily let me just get rid of all the other layouts and just keep one of it um and now what is going to happen is i am going to have this uh, layout which is going to be like this and i can align things okay i can align things like these okay which means i'm locking things like these okay so if it's right align left align and i can align it from two positions usually it's it's like a two two position lock so you know from top and from right or you know any position you want to lock it it's going to stay and keep that margin always maintained so all, uh, my recommendation top and left is like a really good option for a uh, you know text if it's present over here if you're working over here then top and right and depending on where you are positioning it i think it's a good idea to you know just position it out uh, then you have the x and y coordinates uh, just in case you want to try it out and you know, play around with these um again pretty helpful uh, you know in case you want to move things like this now another thing is that you can change the font size you can just click over here okay and you you can scroll around the fonts okay uh, do this later okay enable font focus Okay, I think I have to. I just press the wrong button. All right, let me go back. Yep, perfect. Okay, let it load again. Okay, perfect. Now I'm back. Yep. Uh, so you can just scroll around the text like this, and you can you know select essentially the text that you want, and you can have the the font that you are looking for. So you know a lot of font libraries, a lot of you know font options which are there, are uh, pretty helpful and uh, pretty powerful. I would say. um you can also select the font and you can have uh, a, a resize option uh, a text alignment option which is all, always there so you can in, in case you are writing a paragraph or in case you are writing some sort of text you have these options and you can have the text color um like this in case you want to change the text color or something that's right there uh, then you have the font size bold means bold um and you know you can add more text and do more more stuff okay so let's create a rectangle and area of rectangle okay Let's uh, create a rectangle like this. Okay. Let's make another one which is going to be helpful. So you can press Escape um, or you can just press on this one to insert that option. Make more rectangles. Change the rectangle color like this. Okay. So and just practice how do you make basic layouts in Figma. Okay. So essentially, it is going to allow you to you know have a good amount of creativity and you know amount of good amount of freedom to you know play things around and do things around. Um, 
let's uh, you know let's also see the options which are there okay so these are also written over here as well you have the send to back and send to front so again if i just send it back it's going to go in the back uh if i am over here uh, you know i can essentially look around and essentially see how this entire uh, you know layout is going to fit together and it's also going to allow me that you know how small small elements are helpful to you know integrate things together so you know, in case i want to align these things over here i can just you know send it back uh, send, so I mean, send it back and it's going to go on the back. So, you know, alignment tools, which are essentially helpful. Okay. Um, let's go back. Perfect. Hmm. Let's move ahead. Okay. So align the text and rectangles. So, you know, you can do alignment in, uh, you know, of text uh, inside boxes. We have a resize option, which is helpful for resizing the text, aligning the text. Okay and you have corners okay yeah another very important thing which are corners okay if you zoom in a little okay if you zoom in a little you will see these small dots okay these dots allow you to round on the corners okay so you if in case you want to round out the corners you have these options to round out corners okay this usually happens in a dependent manner which means all of the rounding happens uh, very uh, all together so you know you basically have all the corners are being rounded at the same time which is good uh, but sometimes you don't really want to do that so in that case, you have an option to have independent rounding uh, for all of these. So, you know, in case I want to make it zero, I want to make it zero, you can, you can do that. So, you know, it gives you a very good amount of control uh, to, you know, how you want that layout to look and, you know, how you want that layout to actually feel uh, with the user perspective. Okay, add round the corners or rectangles. Okay, basic options of, you know, in case you want to uh, change the colors and everything. Change the fonts, okay, how you can change the fonts. Uh, we've already talked about this thing. How you can change the font colors how you can change the fonts and everything so you know that's basically covers the entire figma i hope you understood and i hope you had a lot of fun uh, understanding figma it's pretty powerful uh, it's cloud based so it's very lightweight you don't really need anything you need a good internet that's that's something which is there sometimes uh, but yeah figma covers essentially the basic understanding of how you can make good prototypes uh, without paying anything okay so that that covers figma i hope you had a great uh, great time learning and I'll see you in the next one. Till then, happy learning and peace.